Welcome to the HO Scale Western Pacific Oregon Division. This is my uh, layout based in the early 1970s and uh, based on the WP as it would have run had they built all the way to Portland, Oregon. This layout is approximately 35 feet long by about 22 feet wide in an L-shaped configuration with a center peninsula down the middle of the long leg of the L. It is approximately 330 feet of track. It starts here in Klamath Falls, runs completely around the perimeter of the room, and winds up here in Portland, Oregon. Today we're going to follow extra 3508 with three orange and silver GP 40s and 35s on it from Klamath Falls all the way to Portland, Oregon, and I'll do a walkthrough and show you some of the high points of this layout. So this structure and many structures like it on the layout were built by a good friend of mine, Nick Haskell, who is a very accomplished craftsman. This is actually a Scale Structures Limited kit, but it has been heavily modified. And you will see throughout the layout tour examples of Nick's handiwork. We are now at Chamult Siding and also Chamult Junction. This will eventually be a track coming in from Hidden Staging so that the uh, log trains have a place to come from and go to on their way to Klamath Falls Yard. Right now, Extra 3508 is meeting the uh, log train here at West Chamult Siding. Now that the uh, extra 3508 is out of the way, the log train has the signal to highball towards Klamath Falls. Uh, this is coming out of the tunnel at Crescent Lake on the way to Summit Siding where we'll meet Burlington Northern 6438. NMRA uh, Coast Region meet. They had an auction of model railroad stuff and it was in a box with a whole bunch of other structures. And that's how I've populated almost in my entire layout is with structures other people have built. Now having cleared the, the 3508, the 6438 is clear to highball towards Klamath Falls. We've now reached the summit of the railroad, which appropriately enough is named Summit Siding. This is the highest point on the railroad at 57 inches off the floor. It's also uh, the entrance to the layout. So there's a duck under to get into the layout. From here, the track descends towards the first deck on a 3% grade at the, at the top of the summit and goes to 2.5% for most of the way down to Springfield. 
the train's now passing the Dexter Lake Club. Uh, a friend of mine put the sign there because for those of you that are fans of the movie Animal House, most of it was filmed in the area that I model. And the Dexter Lake Club features prominently in a scene from Animal House where the frat boys have to quickly depart from a dance hall where they abandon their dates. The train's now descending the grade, representing some of the upper reaches of the Cascade Line, uh, including uh, Cusat and Fields. This is a very rocky and steep area on the real SP Natron cutoff, and I tried to replicate that a little bit on uh, this part of the layout with uh, a lot of tunnels and a rock shed. This is a temporary rock shed that's only been sitting there for about five or six years, as a lot of things on model railroads are. Uh, eventually, it will be replaced with something that's more prototypical and closer to uh, SP specs. The train now reappears in the far alcove. That alcove was originally sealed off from the rest of the layout, but after attending a meeting of the NMRA Layout Design and Operations Special Interest Group, where I did a design consultation. I cut through that wall and jackhammered out a little piece of the concrete and opened it up. It was originally uh, where the helix was to get to the second deck, but now instead of a helix, I have a uh, just a long grade connecting the upper deck to the lower deck. This part of the main line uh, is eventually going to get replaced. I built it using the spline roadbed method, which I'm not really happy with. Uh, the track's a little rough. It's hard to run long cars on this stretch. So like many model railroads, parts of this will be replaced. Eventually there will be a cement plant built right where you see the train now, and it will be served by a branch line coming out of Oak Ridge. We're now rolling through uh, what's a little almost diorama-like vignette. Uh, eventually, it will be my representation of the Salt Creek trestle area on the SP Cascade line. When the scene is complete, all the track below the train will be covered up with scenery. Extra 3508 has now reached Oak Ridge or at least my interpretation of Oak Ridge had the Western Pacific built through it. The real Oak Ridge on the Southern Pacific was a helper station and also the base for snow fighting equipment uh, for the Cascade Line. Uh, needless to say, USP uh, fans out there will notice quite a few discrepancies compared to the real thing. But it is my railroad. Extra 3508 is now passing a structure, again built by my friend Nick Haskell. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but the intricacy and the detail are pretty amazing. 3508 is now rolling into Springfield Junction. This is the point where the Southern Pacific joins the Western Pacific for the run over the Cascade Range in my world. The real SP at Springfield Junction, it is, the, it is where the old uh, SP Siskiyou line joins the Cascade line. We're now at the engine facility at Springfield Yard. This is actually one of the structures that I am building, and this is the main engine facility for the entire railroad, where heavy repairs for the north end of the WP are completed. Thirty five oh eight is now rolling across uh, the bridge and entrance to the layout. This bridge is actually built on top of a piece of a solid core door. This is the entrance to the layout that I alluded to earlier, directly underneath Summit. 
The door is anchored to two 4x4 four four posts that are in turn anchored into the concrete floor. The bridge itself has been here for almost 15 years and has needed very little adjustment in that entire time. We're now rolling past one of the centerpieces on the layout. This is a completely scratch built lumber mill that was actually a contest award winner. This again was done by my friend Nick Haskell who unfortunately is not in the hobby anymore but as a result I got his entire layout and all the buildings that came with it. This model was entered into the Logging Modelers Convention in 2010 and it took first place and best of show. I did some substantial modification to the layout to accommodate this and it's now the centerpiece. One of the first things you see when you come into the layout room. It's completely board by board construction with a full interior. So now I'm going to take the roof off to show the complete interior detail of this as well as the detail of the roof structure itself. The roof trusses are all individual board by board construction. The uh, Each individual piece of metal siding is applied to the roof structure. As I said, this is uh, an amazing piece of craftsmanship, which I feel extremely fortunate to possess. For example, the interior details include a complete office right down to the desks and documents on the desks and the office workers. Here you can see the entire production floor where the logs come in to be sawn into individual boards. Here you can see the individual boards and here is the cutting table where boards are cut to various lengths and then stacked and sorted for uh, delivery to the loading dock. In addition, there are uh, items such as a planer, there's sawdust on the floor right down to individual brooms, the workers, individual lights. Unfortunately, the lights don't work, but you can see the level of detail is phenomenal. This is called the filer's room, I believe. Uh, this is where workers would sharpen the teeth on the various saws, both the circular saws and the bandsaw teeth. It was very important to keep them very, very sharp. They would be removed on a regular basis to uh, be sharpened and then put back onto the various saws in the sawmill. Here's another room that is uh, a workshop. As you can see, uh, workers, tools all over the place, even posters on the walls. It is just simply mind-boggling how much detail he put into this. And keep in mind that every single board and every single stud is an individual piece of wood. This was all built by hand. The train's now rolling through Salem, uh, close to the end of the layout. This is also where the Woodburn branch shoots off of the main line to serve the Weyerhaeuser paper plant and West Coast grocery. Central California traction number 80, which is way far away from its home base in the Central Valley of California, and I don't know how it got here, but it is one of my favorite locomotives that I painted and decaled many many years ago and so it earns its living on my layout. The building you see in the foreground that the train is rolling past is my representation of the Weyerhaeuser paper plant in Salem, Oregon which was a major shipper on the Southern Pacific and the Burlington Northern. The line that the train is traversing now represents the former SPNS or Spokane Portland and Seattle line and previous to that Oregon electric line that runs through uh, 
central and northern Oregon towards Portland. Okay, we're rolling into Portland Yard, the end of the line for this layout. I want to thank you for coming to visit the Oregon Division of the Western Pacific Railroad. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed your tour as much as I have enjoyed building and running this layout. So thank you and thank you to TSG Multimedia for doing this tour.